Amongst every genre of video game out there, there is one that seems to stand out to some on some sort of unique pedestal. A throne, even, might you have it. A genre which is in a realm of its own. The extraction game genre's momentous popularization happened March 8th of 2016, a pivotal moment in gaming history when The Division was released, to include its Dark Zone attachment. After eight outlandish years, players like you and me are still craving more. More depth, more community, more better, I guess. Even after games like Tarkov, Marauders, Hunt Showdown, and The Cycle Frontier, there is this clear lack of disconnect between us, the players, and them, the developers. So, what has to happen in order for them to fix this, for us to get what we're so desperately craving? Sit down and get ready for the ride with your favorite drink and snack, because we're about to ensure that you and I stay better at gaming than all of our friends together. Let's go. I'd like to travel back in time a bit to March of 2016 when this incredible genre was exposed with The Division. Ubisoft, by a complete utter accident, arguably revolutionized video games by garnering a massive player base and exposing them to this entirely new, quote unquote, genre. With the waves that Dark Zone created come some drawbacks too, though. With it being essentially the first popular quote-unquote extraction game, that kind of played against itself too. Dark Zone's mistakes can be learned from other games. After a seemingly short period of time, the Dark Zone slowly became a toxic hellhole that no one wanted to go to with way too much griefing for way too little reward. It became itself a Dark Zone. A place less and less people wanted to explore until eventually the game died off almost entirely with just its dedicated fan base continuing on to play. This is the potentiality of any game's future, not just extraction games. Total death, flops on launch, bankruptcy, community engulfment, poor updates or expansions, absolute trash marketing, overhype, a multitude of technical issues. I think you get the point. But the Division 1, or the first Division, did ultimately lead to a second game, as I'd hope most of you know, so it clearly had tons of great aspects to it as well. The major effect that The Division's Dark Zone had on the extraction game genre with all its problems and profits is what really triggered these cravings that we all have today, at least. That's what I think. Chronologically speaking, the next extraction game to hit the gaming market was actually Tarkov, believe it or not. It just wasn't in an open access stage yet. The alpha, to clarify, was what was being played essentially at the same time of the release of The Division. A little bit of time gap there. Tarkov's closed beta in the summer of 2016 made some pretty decent waves amongst gamers. This wasn't quite the point that the game exploded, while also changing the genre forever, but this period was much more certainly the beginning of Tarkov's saga. I'd say most of us know where the story for this game goes already, or we all have an opinion on the game's current stage at least, so I won't bother you with the gory details of all the problems that come along with the game and benefits that it has brought to the community. Nonetheless, Tarkov's alpha was far from perfect, not even remotely close, just like most games in their alpha stages, especially closed alphas or closed beta alphas, whatever you want to call it. I'll allow you to draft in your mind what it may have looked like back then if you've ever seen the game the way it is today. Only because I would like to quickly move on to Hunt. Yes, Hunt Showdown. Now, almost two whole years have passed at this point, so right about now is when The Division was slowing down and Tarkov was blowing up. February of 2018. And this insanity of a game decided to release, Hunt Showdown. It was no diamond in the rough when it comes to early game issues. It, I don't think any game is, really. Every game has its early game issues. I mean, every game has issues. So again, clear, obvious early game problems, and interestingly enough, Hunt was not the war-crazed game it is today, back then. Back then, it was small, the player base was small, the dev team behind the game was the same dev team that made Crisis, and if you don't know what Crisis is, I want you to know that it is okay to be wrong about deciding to not play a video game. Beside the point, the burden to bear of a high quality game being produced was, suffice to say, extraordinarily high. The Crisis developers were the ones behind Hunt Showdown, this insane game that decided to release right here in this seemingly perfect period of time. Moving on, a couple more problems Hunt faced were early game balancing issues and long queue times, clearly due to the initial small player base. Not too, too long after release, Hunt kind of exploded, inevitably turning into the renowned cowboy zombie semi-extraction game we all know it to be popular for today. Oh, and the audio engineering in Hunt is beyond this world.
Tarkov needs some of that shit. Now, are you seeing any patterns? The specific patterns in these games, The Division, The Dark Zone specifically, obviously, Tarkov and its pre-alpha or beta alpha, closed alpha in the summer of 2016, Hunt Showdown in February of 2018, all these games coming together, doing their thing, blowing up, creating waves, making patterns things for you to notice, things that we all should notice, and I would hope that all of us are able to point something out. So far, there have been some stick-out patterns in the games that I've listed so far, and so what sticks out to you specifically? What do you know about these games that they've done well, or extraordinarily well, or horribly? There's a reason that these games ended the way they did, or I guess really, they maybe they didn't even end except for maybe The Division. Subscribe if you think you found a single pattern or more, or maybe even if you didn't find any at all. But moving on, let's move into some games that didn't quite have such happy endings. 2019 rolls around, COVID is but a mere year around the corner, Tarkov is quite literally the face of this entire genre, and this incredible semi-comic style indie game drops. And I must say, this game was an absolute fucking blast, probably by far my favorite so far in the entire genre. I digress. If you've never heard of this game, good, because it's dead. Oopsie, spoiler alert. Uh, well, you're gonna find out one way or another. The Psycho Frontier was a cheater heaven, free to play, semi comic style extraction shooter with heavy Tarkov elements. The near unfathomable difference it had to set itself apart from the rest was indeed its hub. A hub, a lobby style open area for players to gear up in, not too dissimilar to the ones you might find in Hawked or Ascendant Infinity. The cycle had its major advantage of the hub, but the devs either didn't know where to take it, or maybe they were satisfied with the money they had already earned with the in-game purchases. I don't know exactly what happened, but again, no game is impervious to flaws, and the devs made one grave mistake and the community raved. They eventually got over it and continued to enjoy the cheater haven the game was, but even after a near 41,000 player peak, eventually the devs announced that the game's servers would be shutting down. Honestly, I'm surprised I didn't cry when I heard that. This game was an absolute beast addition to the genre, and I hope so many other dev teams learn from this game, because this was just something else. It was bland, there was no story, but oh my god, there was just something about the sci-fi extraction that just hit, slapped you right in the face, right on the mouth, and it was just incredible. The Psycho Frontier will always, always, always have a place in my heart forever. Honestly, I don't think I will ever forget this game. Fantastic. Rolling into the height of COVID-19, people were living in their homes with their children, doing school over Chromebooks. Uh, skilled laborers were practically learning how to do their job over the phone. I mean, I don't know how you're going to wire a house as an electrician through FaceTime, but uh, that shit was wild. But nobody cared because space pirates decided that they want a piece of the glory in our safe haven of Tark- I mean, uh, not, not Tarkov, extraction games. Yes. <laughs> Marauders launches in 2021 with what seems like an exact carbon copy of Escape from Tarkov. Fantastic. With some minor tweaks. Oh, nice. Mainly, it's in space. Oh, quite the difference. And I guess you also get a spaceship. Interesting. That's really it, though. That's the only difference. It's in space, and you get a spaceship. <laughs> this game, yet again, suffered from all the same issues any new game would, but the thing behind this was that it had zero uniqueness with it. That did not play to its benefit. It was literally Escape from Tarkov in outer space, and I actually have a whole last video talking just about exactly that. Tarkov in space. Small community, bugs, small dev team, all the same nonsense, okay? But this game doesn't get a happy ending. It has its niche player base of like 300 players, and that will probably be all it will ever be. It is nothing unique, it's not fresh, it's not innovative, it is literally Tarkov, but you're a space pirate instead. There's a couple things here and there that are a little bit different about it. Obviously, it's set in more of a World War II-esque era, but again, oh, it's also steampunk style, but again, anyways, it won't ever be more than the 300 players per month active playing the game. That's it. That's all it is. <sighs> the impassable mountain of the extraction genre, the greatness of the Dark Zone, of 
Tarkov, of Hunt, and the downfalls of the cycle of Marauders, and likely many more to come. Maybe Hawked, who knows? Or Star Siege Dead Zone, great example, garbage game. These are the things that need to be paid attention to. The things that need to be used to learn from. Abused, even, some might argue. I know I would argue that. Abuse the shit out of the things that come before you. The birth of earth-shattering creation doesn't come from ignorance. It doesn't come from seeing what others have done and just blatantly ignoring it. Ignorance is not bliss. Hey, buddy. What did I miss? It's a great question. You're dead. Thank you. Crafting an irresistible, mouth-watering, mind-boggling video game comes from intent, hard work, blood, sweat, tears, all the mumbo-jumbo. All of these difficulties, not the ones that every game has, but the ones just our genre has. Uniqueness and freshness requirements, depth, interactability, a real story of some kind at least, balancing of the PvPVE, E standing for environment, not enemy, that element as well, the PvPVE. These aren't things that any other singular genre has to deal with all at once. I don't think Call of Duty has to deal with uniqueness and freshness requirements, or any sort of depth or interactability, or any sort of real story, maybe a PvP balancing element. I don't think any RPG like Starfield or Baldur's Gate has to really deal a whole lot with all of this all at once. Certainly a uniqueness and freshness factor. Definitely depth, because that's involved in the story. Interactability, I feel like, comes nature, second-handed to an RPG. RPG game. Same with the real story. There is no singular genre, and I don't think you could change my mind, that has to deal with every single obstacle that the extraction game genre has to deal with. There is just a unique set of obstacles that come with making this type of game. And it doesn't help that the community doesn't know exactly what the fuck we want either. We don't know exactly every detail of what we want. We are reliant on the creative minds of development teams to create these games. All I know and all I can speak on is that Tarkov is great. Sure, has some cheaters in it. I find that a non-issue because every game has cheaters in it. The Cycle Frontier, absolutely phenomenal game, as you could probably tell. Now, moving on. I digress here. I'll step off my soapbox. This genre is really still considered up and coming as well. So there's nothing but risk involved for new devs coming into the scene. They have nothing to gain other than winning the lottery. I think Marauders might be the exception to that. They have seemed to find their niche community and hopefully, I guess, continue to see some sort of maybe a live service element in their game. I don't really know. Needless to say, around the 2022 to 2023 period, with Tarkov running rampant with cheaters, Embark Studios and Bungie still having their hands in their pockets in regards to whatever extraction games they're gonna fucking release, it really, really felt like this genre was on its deathbed. Honestly, even with Tarkov's latest patches and Grey Zone Warfare coming to open access very soon, it still feels like this genre is on its deathbed. We need, absolutely need, a development team to just blow us out of the water. Maybe you're even down for just getting rid of the out of the water part. But some of our last hopes are Grey Zone, Arc Raiders, maybe Marathon, or Beautiful Light. But really, is Beautiful Light an extraction game? No. Not. It's like Hunt. It's not really. Maybe Ascendant Infinity. Maybe, but again, not really an extraction game. Hunt Showdown really isn't even an extraction game. I think it's just similar to the genre. I think it's close enough to include it. Again, I digress. I'm sorry to say, but this video is not getting the happy-go-lucky ending. We have yet to pass the impassable mountain. I am personally hoping that these next couple game releases really, really blow up the genre. I would even go as far as to say that they almost certainly will, but I don't want to provide any false hope. At least, not within you, because I know that I am full of false hope. I hype myself up all the time. Even though it certainly seems that Madfinger Games has learned a thing or two, maybe from Farmer's Insurance uh, or from other games in the past, I absolutely love this genre. All these games are incredible creations. I'm not fond of every single one personally, but I believe that they all have a great contribution in one way or another to the genre. And if you're someone who is wondering what it is about this genre that piques my interest so much, or maybe even others' interest so much, go ahead and watch this video up on screen because it explains it all. Other than that, stick around for more Extraction Game news and we'll talk again real soon. Peace.